Okay, episode six, atmospheric stability. Uh, we have unstable air and stable air. Uh, let me, before we start that, let me read uh, just a little bit out of the uh, aviation weather. It's uh, advisory circular AC00-6B is the current one. Uh, it's, it's freely available on the FAA website. You can download it as a PDF document, or you can buy the book. Uh, let me, so let me just read this briefly, which may help. Uh, it's Chapter 12. Convective clouds and precipitation pose a distinctly different flying environment than stratiform clouds and precipitation. Okay, These sharply contrasting conditions result from the atmosphere either resisting or accelerating the vertical motion of air parcels. Uh, atmosphere, atmospheric stability is the property of the ambient air that either enhances or suppresses vertical motion of air parcels and determines which type of cloud and precipitation a pilot will encounter. Okay, so the easiest way for me to understand this is uh, for in any situation, the sun, you know, we understand that all weather is the result of uneven heating of the Earth's surface on a massive global scale, but on a local scale as well. So we go in the parking lot in the summertime with the pavement and the sun heats that dark pavement up and it heats the air above it. And then there's grass next to it. The sun beats on the, is absorbed with the grass and doesn't heat the grass up as much. So that's not as warm. So this warm air, surrounded by cooler air, starts to rise. That's what warm air does. And as it rises, it cools because it's expanding, right? At the very bottom of the atmosphere, it's thick, dense air because of the pressure. And as the air rises, it expands, and as it expands, it gives off the heat of the of that air parcel. So, in a stable air situation, it will um, this warm air will cool off at a standard rate, and with, without too much distance, it'll be at the same temperature as the air around it, and it'll no longer want to rise. So it's being suppressed; it doesn't continue to rise. However, in an unstable situation, unstable atmosphere, this warm parcel of air will be warm enough, perhaps, that it will continue to rise and the air around it stays cooler than, than that warm air. The warm air is cooling, of course, as it goes, but it's still a little bit warmer than the air around it, and it just keeps going up and up and up. And it'll, in extreme cases, it will um, continue to go up, depending on how unstable the atmosphere is. It will go all the way up to the tropopause. Tropopause is that area where the temperature no longer drops off as as goes higher, uh, and that's an extremely powerful thunderstorm at that point because there's lots of updrafts, and as the air is rising, this warm moist air is rising, um, it cools, and once you reach a certain temperature, it also the is saturated. The air is saturated and turns into clouds, and eventually turns into rain. So that's how I understand it. It seems to be the easiest way to understand these warm air parcels rising, stable atmosphere. It will just rise and cool, and once it reaches the same temperature around it, it'll just stop. And that's typically what we see on a day when we look outside and see these smaller puffy clouds with a flat bottom. That's what it's done. It's it, that warm parcel of air has risen to the point where the temperature of the cloud of the uh, warm air parcel. Uh, reaches saturation, so it turns into a cloud, and then it maybe goes a little bit higher, but then it just sort of stops and turns into a bumpy, look, pretty little cloud, uh, but it doesn't have any other uh, unstable motion to make it continue to rise. Uh, and on a day when you're looking at and see these huge thunderstorms or these thunderstorms around, you know that that's an unstable day. So anyway, the characteristics. So the test questions will be, so uh, let me pull one up here. Here it is, right here. Here's an example. What are the characteristics of moist, unstable air mass? And three answers. One is turbulence and showery precipitation, poor visibility and smooth air, haze and smoke. Well, because it's unstable, we have a lot of vertical motion push, pushing these warm air, mass, or air parcels up, and so it's going to be turbulent. Um, and... Um, it, it will be um, showery precipitation because they're just individual air parcels that are rising up and turning into, or condensing and turning into clouds and then eventually into 
uh, rain, so showery precipitation, and that's what we see on the chart here. Unstable air, cumuliform, showery precipitation, turbulence, good visibility. Then the next question would be, what are the characteristics of stable air? Well, we have three choices. Little trickier, because it says one of them is good visibility and steady precipitation. Well, we look over there on stable, and we see stratiform, continuous. Steady, continuous, same thing. Same meaning of that term. Smooth air and fair to poor visibility. The second answer is poor visibility and steady precipitation. And the third is poor visibility and intermittent precipitation. Well, steady precipitation or continuous precipitation. So when you come to these kind of questions, the difference between stable air and unstable air generally comes down to whether it's showery precipitation or continuous precipitation. Hint, hint. Okay. So there are other factors here. Um, however, that is probably the one of the main keys there. Let's see. Um, here's another question. Upon your pre-flight evaluation of whether the forecast you reference state that there is an unstable air mass approaching your location, which would not be a concern for your impending operation. Um, so unstable, think unstable. Uh, air mass moving your thing. So unstable, we generally have thunderstorms. Maybe there's a lot of uh, building up of the clouds. Uh, we'd have turbulence, yes. Well, the three different things, remembering that it's asking for what would not be, A is thunderstorms, B is stratiform clouds, C is the turbulent conditions. Well, thunderstorms are, and turbulent conditions are, but stratiform clouds, no, that's more typical of stable air. Um, back to atmospheric stability, what would decrease the stability of an air mass? Okay, think now, those warm air bubbles rising, um, what would decrease the stability of an air mass would be warming from below. If there was warm air underneath, it would tend to push up through the cooler air and accelerate because it would continually be warmer than the air around it. Okay. And that's one of the answers. Warming from below, cooling from above, decrease in water vapor. Okay. And the explanation for the question is when near the surf when near the surface is warm and moist, suspect instability. Surface heating, cooling aloft, converging up upslope winds, or an invading mass of colder air may lead to instability in cumuliform clouds. So what they're talking about is a cold front moving through may push warm air up and force this, these warm air bubbles to accelerate above the cooler air, and that would be unstable. Typically, we see in cold fronts, yeah, unstable air. As a cold front moves through, it's un it causes instability because it's pushing this warm air up, and that's why in a cold front we often get thunderstorms and showery precipitation. Here's another diagram that might help uh, to visualize these air parcels, okay? So we have, let me get my pencil out here. Oh, sorry. I'll use my red one here. Okay, so we have an air parcel. This is an air parcel here, and it rises, right? Because it's warmer than the air around us. Then we have another air parcel that's cooler than the air around it, and it sinks. Or we have neutral, which is the same temperature as what I've been saying, is that if this warm air parcel rises till it gets to the point where it's the same temperature as the air around it. So uh, just as an example, let's say this air is 30 degrees. Yeah, that's unlikely. It should be 30 Fahrenheit. That just means it's reached to the level of the air around it being 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, so up here we see unstable air, the parcel is warmer than the surrounding, so it, it rises and expands. It's instable, un, unstable. <laughs> Stable air, the parcel is cooler than its surrounding. It sinks and compresses. The air is going down. Or the parcel of the same temperature as surrounding with no change. It doesn't rise or fall. So that's a really good explanation of that.
Okay. Okay, good. Uh, just remember again that uh, at lower altitude, the air is compressed, so we have higher pressure at low altitude, lower pressure at high altitude, uh, which gives us an idea about, about the uh, compressibility of the atmosphere. All right, a word about temperature inversion. Um, this is simply a, a layer of atmosphere in which the temperature increases with altitude. All right, we've got cold air underneath it, and as the warm air is rising, it's getting warmer. Versions commonly occur with the low, within the lowest few thousand feet above the ground due to some kind of nighttime uh, radiational cooling along frontal zone. Basically, cold air is trapped in the valley, perhaps, or around a, a town, city. Strong wind shears often occur across the temperature inversion layers, which can uh, generate some turbulence as well, as you can see. Um, um, typically, like like Mexico City, it just gets really uh, down in a valley, and it gets this trapped pollution gets in those areas. And of course, it used to be that way in the United States, although we've cut back on emissions and whatnot. But there's uh, related to turbulence. Basically, the warm air is trapped between the two layers. And an interesting effect of temperature inversion is sometimes um, and it, the, the very small temperature inversions happen all the time. And uh, at least in Griffin, you can hear the railroad train whistles blowing from a long ways away. And uh, sometimes you'll even hear sounds. It sounds like they're very close, but the sound, an explosion or something like that might be quite a distance away, but it, the sound waves will tend to echo off these inversions. Um, that's just a matter of curiosity, really, rather than a test question, but uh, just something you might be aware of. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? That, yes. Here's one. Clouds fog or dew will always form when water vapor condenses. It's related to this section. Um, right, that's these warm air, moist warm air parcels rise, they get to a certain, cool to a certain temperature and they can no longer hold, become saturated with moisture and it turns into something visual like a cloud or fog if it's lower or dew, eventually rain. Um, we didn't talk about wind shear, but uh, in these temperature inversions, that's a possibility as well. Wind shear just means there's two different wind currents blowing in different directions, and that little section between the two directional wind will become a little bit turbulent. I guess I can make a little drawing here to help you, maybe. Uh, we have wind going this way, and then wind going this way, and remember, air is pretty much like a lot like water because... You can imagine there'll be a lot of turbulence this thing as it gets between the two two wind currents there's a lot of turbulence along in here because the wind is swirling around it's basically wind shear and it's obviously going to be turbulent but it's usually in a fairly thin layer although we also get turbulence um okay we have a building here now this is the ground right we're flying our drone the wind is blowing like here 10, maybe 15 knot wind. And as the wind comes over the top of this, you're going to have some turbulence over here. So flying our little drone over on the, the leeward side, as they call it, or the downward side of a, a large building or some obstruction, even trees, can cause some turbulence, uh, which make it difficult to control or definitely difficult to get a nice solid video or a photograph because the drone's jumping around. It could cause a crash, sure. Uh, so that's it. Um, just as a review, also, we have the difference between uh, pavement. Okay, here's the question. When, over which area should a remote pilot expect to find the highest amount of thermal currents under normal conditions? Thermal currents, that means uneven heating of the earth in a local sense. The answers are parking lot, large lake, pine tree forest. Remember that trees and grass or water uh, tends to absorb the, the heat of the sun greater than a parking lot 
or a, or a plowed field. And in previous lessons, we mentioned that before, that uh, gliders and vultures tend to look for these rising air parcels and hover around them. They don't stay, they don't go straight up because they move with the wind. But as they move, you'll see the, the, um, the, the um, vultures circle around these warm air and rise up higher. And they don't have to flap their wings. And of course, glider pilots do the same thing. It's amazing how far a glider pilot can go. No power, but they can fly for many, many, many miles. I think I might have covered all the questions that I, uh, that we might see on the test. Uh, is a, it's not really a trick question, but it's an odd question. A strong, steady wind exists, exists out of the north. You need to photograph an area to the south. You are located in an open field with no obstructions. Which of the following is not a concern during the operation? Well, you're, the wind's coming out of the north, and you're going to move towards the south, downwind. Um, you... Were, would be concerned that you might not have enough battery power to come back if there's a nice, strong, steady wind. Um, so the, the strong wind may exceed the performance of the UAS, make it impossible to recover, or the strong wind conditions may consume more battery power at a faster rate than a common conditions. So those are the things you are concerned about. When you're not concerned about turbulent conditions, would likely be a significant factor during the operation since you're moving away from the uh, you're into an open field with no obstructions. It's, it's battery power question. Anyway, very good. Continue. Again, FAA Advisor Circular AC00-6B, Aviation Weather. Might be worth reading through that or looking through that.